Will you take questions on inflation then? Do you think inflation is a political liability? That's a great asset. More inflation. What a stupid son of a bitch. Jen Psaki is asked if Peter Ducey is a stupid son of a bitch or does he just play one on TV? He works for a network that provides people with questions that nothing personal to any individual, including Peter Ducey, but might make anyone sound like a stupid son of a bitch. I think the point she's trying to say there is that Fox pushes storylines that are sometimes nonsense. Ducey does that in the briefing room. But still, she did it in a way playing to a liberal audience. That certainly is going to cause a lot of outrage from Fox. Probably for the next few days, right? Excuse me, why? <laughs> it's different when they do it, I guess. It's almost like Saki and CNN thinks a reporter's job is to ask whatever questions the Biden regime wants them to ask. We're going to get right into this clip, but first give me just 30 seconds to tell you about this free coin offer from Noble Gold. For years now, people have been setting up a little contest between crypto and gold. Both carry stuff and they travel from A to B but they do different jobs. Gold's job is to keep the value of your money safe and preserve its value. And since Ukraine and the oil and inflation crisis, it's done a brilliant job compared to stocks and other investments. So if you're worried about what's going on right now and who isn't, just talk to an expert at Noble Gold about precious metals IRAs for your retirement. They'll put you straight on your options and hold your hand through the whole setup process. And this month, for any qualified IRA, you'll get an incredible three ounce silver American virtue coin completely free as a thank you. Call 877-646-5347 now to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. You can also check out the link in the description or pinned comment. Make sure to tell them Drone Tech sent you. Hello everyone, welcome back and thanks for hitting that like button. By the way, if you want to support this channel, may I recommend the 1UP coin option where you can send a little of that sweet, sweet crypto. Other than that, yeah, I'm talking about Stelter again today. Not just because he can't stop being an insufferable lying clown baby, but also due to the fact that his days at CNN are apparently numbered. Might as well have our fun while we still can before this is Stelter's new job. <laughs> As I always say, the Democrats only consistent principle is that they don't have any outside of the temporary positions they take for political expediency. Basically, Fox is saying, hey, we don't provide him questions. He comes up with it himself. So they're defending his honor. I think Jen Psaki is kind of like, remember in senior year, spring of your senior year, you're about to graduate and you're just tired of all of this. I think we're seeing that from Jen Psaki. She's a right, besides the absurdity of Stelter's other completely baseless, subjective accusations about Peter Ducey's questions being right-wing talking points from a guy who's a well-known, maybe one of the best known left-wing mouthpieces. What else did we hear or rather did not hear? There wasn't a single bit of outrage about the fact Psaki, a representative of the regime occupying the White House currently, attacked a journalist, attacked Fox News, and attacked the people watching it. You'll be hard-pressed to find any outrage about what Saki said in the media at all, much less CNN. Notice that the scandal here, according to Stelter, is that Fox News will be outraged about their reporters and audience being maligned, especially for asking Biden about how inflation will affect the midterms, a completely legitimate question, which they all deemed as stupid and right-wing talking points. Just look at how all these people reacted when Trump criticized of the media, which they found abhorrent and uniquely Trump. Here's a CNN article authored by Chris Zilla, a well-known Democrat Party shill, titled Why It's Different When Our Side Does It. That's not the title you see, but that's what the headline actually says. According to Chris Zilla, these are the things that Trump said about the media that angered them the most. It's also worth taking a step back and saying how different what we just heard is from what we heard for four years. Joe Biden actually apologized. Donald Trump, on the other hand, berated and belittled members of the media, often calling the media the 
enemy of the people. <laughs> not a lie, the media does actively promote hate of half the country, even suggesting that concerned parents and millions of Democrats' political opponents should be treated as domestic enemies by the government. Not to mention they actively support Putin totalitarian style censorship of their political opponents so they can manipulate elections. Part of what Biden's appeal to voters in 2020 was is that he would bring decency and normality back to the White House. Now, you may hear conservatives scream double standard or hypocrisy over this. To hear Biden stoop to Trump's level like that, even for a moment, was without question regrettable on his part. But he admitted he was wrong and apologized for it, which is commendable and, I'll note, something his predecessor never did. Don't disregard the fact that we now have a president, again, who operates under the normal rules of decorum and politeness. When presidents are humans, too, and they get testy and swear from time to time. Excuse me, why? In the article, and unsurprisingly, Chris Zilla argues that it's different when Biden does it. For these two very misleading reasons. One, that Biden only did this one time, and two, that Biden apologized. For one, Biden may have apologized, but now his representative has gone out and just done it again. Which kind of invalidates the original apology, doesn't it? Second, Joe Biden has a long, long, well-documented history of lashing out at reporters who don't ask the right questions. Mr. President, can I ask you a quick question on Israel before you drive no, away? No, you can't. So uh, not unless you get in front of the car as I step on it. How do you explain the performance in Iowa and why should the voters believe that you can win the national election? You're a lying dog faced Tony soldier. You said you were. But you're, now you gotta be honest. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. Why wasn't his apology enough, Mr. Vice President? Why, why attack Sanders? Why, 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 you're getting nervous, man. Just calm down. It's okay. You're selling access to the president just like he does. So you're a damn liar, man. You've taken a cognitive No, test. I haven't taken a test. Why the hell would I take a test? Come on, man. That's like saying you, before you got in this program, if you take a test where you're taking cocaine or not, what do you think, huh? Are, are you a junkie? What do you say? You said a chemical weapon use by Russia would trigger a response in kind? It will trigger a significant response. What does that mean? Mm. I'm not going to tell you. Why would I tell you? you got to be silly. Veterans Affairs is going to have a mandate You are for such a pain in the neck. Back in July, you said inflation was going to be temporary. I think a lot of Americans are wondering what your definition of temporary is. Well, you're being a wise guy with me a little bit, uh, and I understand that's your job. Do you believe the actions today will have an impact on making Russia change course in Ukraine? That's not what I said. You, you're, you're playing a game with me. I He's not confident he'll change his behavior, Mr. President. Yeah, I'm not confident he'll change his behavior. What the hell? What do you do all the time? So you never spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. And so how do you know? How do you know? Here's what I know. I know Trump deserves to be investigated. Ask the right question. I know that you dispute the characterization that you called folks who would oppose those voting bills um, as being Bull Connor or George Wallace, but you said that they would be sort of in the, the same camp. No, uh, I didn't say those. Look what I said. Go back and read what I said and tell me if you think I called anyone who voted on the side of the position taken by Bull Connor that they were Bull Connor. And that is an interesting reading of English. You, you, I assume you got into, into journalism because you like to write. Don't disregard the fact that we now have a president, again, who operates under the normal rules of decorum and politeness. The ease at which these people lie somehow still continues to blow me away. If you'd like to support my mission of exposing as much of this hypocrisy as possible, please check out some of the links in my description or pinned comment. Every bit of support helps, including hitting that like button and leaving a comment to let us all know what you think. Thanks a lot. <coughs>